Okay, moving on to our first segment for today, talking about uh, the recent visit of U.S. State uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken here in Egypt, meeting with uh, President Abdel Fattah El Sisi. Over the phone to discuss this in more details, we have also uh, Mr. or Dr. Hassan Wagir, and he's a professor of international negotiation. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Doctor. So first of all, can we shed the light on the uh, significance of this visit uh, of Antony Blinken to Egypt, especially during this critical period of time? Yeah, it is a very critical uh, time, of course. And it is uh, the continuation of the strategic dialogue between Egypt uh, uh, and the United States. Uh, it is an ongoing dialogue between the two countries. Uh, to, to seek uh, uh, peace and stability, supposedly, uh, in the area, and to uh, enrich uh, mutual uh, interest between the two states. Well, to what extent do you see the two-state uh, solution as the remaining path to achieve sustainable peace and security in the region? And, of course, we, do, we don't have any other choices or chances except to reach this, because definitely without reaching a solution for this crisis taking place in Gaza, we will never reach stability in the region. Actually, as you have said, there is no way out but the two-state solution. And I think that um, all the world, there is a consensus uh, among uh, the overwhelming majority of the world states uh, that this is a radical solution and the correct solution for this uh, a bloody conflict that is uh, being erupted from um, one time to another. And uh, it has to, to be settled and it has to, end, to come to an end. And I think that the problem, as we have mentioned before, uh, there should be an enforcement. The problem uh, is that the two-state two, two solution is enhanced by many, many resolutions uh, by the United Nations and by the sovereign states all over the world, all of them, except one state, the state of Israel, which uh, rejects it and continue to escalate and to, uh, we have seen lately a terrible escalation and uh, a terror attack on the state of Lebanon uh, instead of uh, uh, cooling down the area and uh, de-escalating and uh, responding to the efforts of the United, uh, Egypt and the United States and many countries. But again, the, uh, from my own point of view, uh, I would expect that the United States should exert the uh, real uh, effective pressure. The United States is very preoccupied by the elections, and uh, there is uh, something, something we call them, the politics. Uh, I don't know, left that uh, presidency during this time, and they uh, misusing this uh, period of time and uh, enlarging the, uh, uh, the conflict and escalating. Egypt is trying to de-escalate. The continuation uh, of the strategic dialogue uh, came to an agreement to, to de-escalate, but with no enforcement. And I would urge the United States to, to exert the necessary pressure to, 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 to enforce what is being decided by the overwhelming uh, international community. Well, talking about the current situation now in the region and, uh, of course, uh, tension uh, expanding all around, and um, uh, this meeting tackled many other funds. Well, uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi also reaffirmed Egypt's support for Lebanon in the face of the cyber attack it was subjected to. And how do you see this and what is the repercussions? I mean, in the very beginning, President Sisi has always been the one who used to warn that this war will take us far beyond. Yeah, of course, uh, the president and the Egyptian leadership has exerted what we have called the strategic patience and uh, diligence and uh, continuation to uh, enhance the mediating role uh, to, to, to bring that uh, bloody conflict to an end. And I think this is, uh, was recommended and commended by the United States and by other powers in the world uh, who witnessed what Egypt is doing. And uh, 
Egypt is playing a very important, vital role uh, through the escalate, and Egypt condemned the cyber attack. You know, when you put uh, the, the dangerous thing for the entire world here, uh, we are talking about global village, and uh, uh, we are very interconnected in this world today. And when you put uh, it's explosive in, in mobile or in uh, pagers or in stuff like that, uh, what could prevent you from doing it in, uh, in, in any other products? Uh, so I think that there is a state of uh, um, worry, state of anger, state of uh, yeah, yeah. nobody can agree on what happened. That was a large, large scale terror uh, act against uh, Lebanon. And I think that uh, the president himself uh, said that he is supporting Lebanon against this and uh, rejecting what is happening. Because what's happening is very inhuman and it is uh, uh, an aggression on a state, an Arab state, uh, which is Lebanon in this case, uh, without ending even uh, the, true, the, the conflict in Gaza uh, and to come to a truce. Well, also the meeting tackled other files uh, related to uh, Egypt's growing water needs and how uh, important the Nile River is to the Egyptian people and uh, reaching uh, a solution for this uh, file of uh, the water and the Ethiopian dam. Yes, this is another important file, and uh, uh, I think also the United States can understand the, the situation in Egypt very well, and uh, uh, all the presidents of the United States uh, from one time to time uh, agreed on the Egyptian rights for doing that. But again, uh, Ethiopia is uh, obstinate. Uh, Ethiopia uh, really wasted a lot of time. Uh, mm -hmm. for creating useless negotiations. Egypt insisted on negotiation. Egypt signed an agreement between Egypt, Sudan, and, uh, and Ethiopia mm -hmm. uh, several years ago. You know, the problem is that we have been negotiating for more than 10 years now, and Ethiopia is, taking, uh, is not taking it seriously uh, till now. Uh, and I hope uh, everyone will come to their senses, and, and they know that win-win is the best solution for everyone. And I think that uh, Egypt is still existing the necessary uh, efforts to ensure its right, its legitimate right uh, for water, which was there from thousands of years. Well, also Blinken uh, lauded uh, Egypt's role when it comes to the Sudanese issue, and especially Egypt received many of the Sudanese refugees. Uh, Egypt is supporting them and giving all the rights of Egyptian citizens. And uh, there were talks about uh, the role Egypt is playing uh, to reach a cessation of hostilities and the lasting peace in Sudan. Uh, yes, of course, this is a very another important file. The two states agreed on uh, the main points uh, and uh, agreed on de-escalating and uh, ending uh, that uh, terrible conflict in Sudan. It's also now, it's a long one, and uh, it really jeopardizes peace in, in the entire Africa because it's a place where uh, many foreign powers can intervene, and this is not for the interest of anyone. And I think that also um, uh, Egypt is very keen to, to help the Sudan, which is a particular part, historically speaking. We call it Wadi Nil, the, the, the river valley, uh, which is one thing for Egyptian, uh, Egyptians and Sudanese. And when you are talking about the uh, immigrants, yes, Egypt is taking the burden. Uh, Egypt uh, uh, is really... Uh, hosting uh, almost 15 million people from different countries because of the conflicts, not only Sudan, uh, Sudanese, uh, Japanese, uh, uh, people from Yemen, people from Libya, uh, people from other African countries. Uh, I think this is uh, a very strong burden 
on the Egyptian uh, economy, but, but Egypt is welcoming all those people. Egypt is considering them to be uh, citizens with, uh, with rights, uh, not putting them in camps as in many other countries who really uh, go for that. Egypt didn't like that because the nature of Egypt is uh, very humane and uh, historically speaking, Egypt is a hub for everyone who really wants to seek refuge in this country. Uh, God protect Egypt. Well, do you see this visit uh, during uh, this uh, time in particular, um, how can it help in reaching an immediate ceasefire? I mean, because we can see now tension is increasing all around the region in different areas. So do you think this visit has to do with this and can help to reach uh, a, a ceasefire deal and uh, allowing more humanitarian aid and uh, talking more about hostages as well? Yes, I think that uh, we hope there is a ceasefire. Uh, but again, the, the real problem, a common problem between what's happening in Gaza and the West Bank and uh, now Lebanon and Sudan uh, is the enforcement uh, of, uh, of peace, to enforce peace. Uh, we need to do that. The international community and the president uh, is seeking uh, much more support from the international community because uh, what, is, what is needed is a very important collective uh, effort by all, all the international communities, not only by Egypt or by Egypt and the United States only. Uh, there should be some, some sort of getting a consensus and getting to stop the intervention or the negative intervention in these areas. And finally, again, uh, talking about uh, potentialities and new opportunities for um, exchanging or uh, uh, actually uh, cooperation uh, between both countries, the United States and Egypt, and the promising sectors uh, that were discussed as well. How do you see it? Yes, uh, of course, uh, our relationship with the United States is very strategic mm -hmm. <coughs> for a long period of time. Uh, Egypt and the United States uh, cooperate, did good cooperation in uh, trying to reach uh, or to engineer uh, a peaceful area. And uh, we signed the Camp David Accords with the help of the United States, and it lasted for that period of time. And uh, uh, I hope that peace will prevail eventually, and we, the two states will exert the needed efforts for the sake of the peoples of the area uh, and for a win-win uh, solution for the Palestinian uh, problem. Uh, and I think that there should be some, some way out, and I hope that this continuous effort will, uh, will be fruitful at the end, inshallah. Right, uh, Dr. Hassan Wagih, uh, Professor of International Negotiations, thank you very much for joining us. And right now we are going to take you to a quick tour to find out more about another fascinating palace here located in Cairo. We're going to move on to Abdin Palace, uh, the 19th century palace that was built by Khedev Ismail in Cairo. Let's check it out together, then we'll be back. Abdin Palace. Abdin Palace marks the inception of modern Cairo. The city that came to life upon orders of Khedivi Ismail to turn into a token of European style, embracing spacious squares, wide streets, palaces, buildings and bridges on the Nile, gardens with trees and rare palm trees. The palace was constructed upon an order by Khedivi Ismail after he was enthroned in 1863. The building process lasted for 10 years. The palace is named after Sultan Abdin Bey, a military leader during the reign of Muhammad Ali, who owned a mansion in situ of Abdin Palace. Khalib Ismail bought the palace from the military's leader widow. Later, he built the Sarai on the same land, seizing the large landscape surrounding it. Abdin Palace was the seat of the government from 1874 until the year 2010.